Shalom, my friends, from here in Israel. Um, I just landed yesterday, I was in America, and uh, I was at actually an event celebrating the brave Israeli soldiers, and I landed here in Israel to, uh, today there were over 150 rockets launched at Israel. So I wanted to explain to you a little bit about what's going on. Now the rockets are being launched from the Gaza Strip. Officially, the person, the uh, organization, the government that's in charge in the Gaza Strip is an organization, a terror group called Hamas. But there's another group called Islamic Jihad, and they are also a terror group. Now, Islamic Jihad, for the past year, has been launching rockets at Israel even when Hamas tells them not to. They are set on one thing, and that is destroying Israel, just like Hamas. But while Israel has been able to negotiate with Hamas for some quiet, uh, Islamic Jihad has just been launching rockets into Israel, even during times of quiet, has been planning terror attacks. And who do you think is funding Islamic Jihad and Hamas? Iran. Iran is using their proxies to attack Israel from every direction. From the Gaza Strip, we have them funding Hamas and Islamic Jihad, so that we'll always have attacks in Israel. We have them funding uh, Hezbollah in Lebanon in Israel's north with hundreds of uh, exact location rockets pointed at Israel and uh, building um, uh, underground tunnels for them so that they can invade Israel. By 10 o'clock this morning, uh, Islamic Jihad and Hamas spent over $10 million launching rockets into Israel. That's how much it costs for that program. And so when they talk about not having food and medicine and things for their people, if they would invest in their people instead of destroying Israel, they would be a lot better. But anyways, uh, Islamic Jihad is a big terror organization in the Gaza Strip sponsored by Iran. And the leader of Islamic Jihad has been planning terror attack after terror attack and implementing it. And Israel last night found out the exact location of where he was and targeted killed him. Now, this is an amazing thing about Israel. Israel has been tracking him for years, just like other terrorists, but Israel will not kill a terrorist, even if they know they're on the way to an attack in Israel, if there are any children nearby, if there are any family nearby, if there are any civilians nearby. Israel will abort an operation to kill a terrorist on the way to a terror attack if there are civilians nearby, because Israel cherishes life. And so this was the first time that Israel had the ability to kill him when he was alone and no civilians would be killed. Now the terrorists know this, so they specifically hide out in homes with lots of children. We know that one of the uh, uh, group, terror group in the Gaza Strip, their location, their, their control operations, you know where it's done from? The basement of the hospital there. So if you want to destroy their control operations of the terrorists in the Gaza Strip, you have to destroy the hospital with all the sick people. Golda Meir said it perfectly. The day that the Arabs and the Palestinians um, put down their weapons is the day that there'll be peace. That if Israel would put down our weapons, we would be destroyed. If the Palestinians would put down their weapons, there would be peace. And so last night when there was no one around and no civilians and no family, Israel killed the top terror leader of Islamic Jihad who has done hundreds of terror attacks on Israel. Now, what happens in response? What's happened in response is that Islamic Jihad and Hamas and all the terror organizations in the Gaza Strip have come together to launch attacks at Israel. We've had over 150 rockets launched at Israel. Tel Aviv, Israel's metropolitan city, filled with rockets being launched at it. Right by Jerusalem, in Modi'in, all over, rockets all across Israel. Code red sirens, and what's amazing is that the rockets have landed in buildings, in homes, on busy highways, but exactly right after a person leaves the home or exactly after the cars drive by, that God has been doing miracles. There have been a few people injured in Israel and we pray for their uh, full, full, full recovery, but God has been doing miracles that wherever the rockets land, there's a story of, um, of, of a miracle that it was right when the people left. Now, Islamic Jihad is launching these rockets from homes. Israel has aerial video of uh, Hamas and the terrorists launching the rockets from the Gaza Strip from people's 
homes, from huge apartment buildings. And so Israel decides to let them launch the rockets instead of destroying the homes with people and children and civilians in it. So we're, we're fighting a very difficult war. I wouldn't say that this is a war yet. Right now it's just a conflict, but it could break into a war any second. And meanwhile, Israel is getting bombarded with rockets as we speak. And um, I just urge you to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. When you see this type of fighting, it's so clear who cherishes life and who cherishes death. Who's the light and who's the darkness? Israel is moving all of its people into bomb shelters, canceling school and work so that the children could be home and be safe, uh, moving babies into protected areas in the hospital, while Hamas, Islamic Jihad, and the terrorists are actually using homes filled with civilians and children to launch their attacks using children as um, shields, human shields, that you see very clearly here. Who's the, who's the righteous one who are fighting a holy war and who is not? Israel targeted a terrorist who is on his way planning terrorist attack. They, the terrorists, are responding by shooting rockets into kindergartens, into schools, into factories, into homes. It's not equivalent. Um, and so I just continue to pray and invite you to pray with me that Israel will have divine power to wipe out the terrorists without hurting any civilians, that the rockets will be led by God to land in open areas and not cause any more pain, and that the people and the children of Israel should not have to sustain any more trauma. It's been a very difficult day, and we're just praying, praying, praying for peace. So join me in praying for peace. Join me in staying up to date on the news about Israel. We have so many people here um, who are joining our page, pro-Israel pages, just blasting it with the Palestinian flag and saying uh, things about Gaza. We need the voice of pro-Israel people, lifting up the voices and having your voice heard. Last thing, just so you have a context of what the Gaza Strip is. Gaza is in southern Israel, and it's always been a hotbed for terrorists. Um, and so in 2005, Israel gave the uh, Gaza Strip to the Palestinians. They said the world always says that the Palestinians are uh, having terror and doing terror against Israel because they're being controlled or they're being oppressed. Okay, we'll give the Gaza Strip to the Palestinian people. We'll let them have free elections, and let's see what happens. Israel invested in setting up greenhouses, businesses, everything in the Gaza Strip so that the people would be successful in establishing a real country. And what happened? Hamas terrorists took over as the government, invested all the money in tunnels and weapons, became a proxy of Iran, and has been terrorizing Israel since then. So these are the people that we are dealing with. So. If you found this video informative, share it. Share the information that you hear about Israel, especially now. We need your voice. The uh, Bible says, pray for the peace of Jerusalem, and through that you will be blessed. Um, we need your prayers. We need you to spread the word of what's going on in Israel, of the rocket attacks, of Israel wanting peace. And God bless you from here in Israel. Shalom.